Hi, this is Tom McCaffrey. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Please subscribe to this channel and please uh, like this video if you like it. Um, please check out my podcast, LA2B. All right, I'm gonna today. I'm gonna talk about uh, the movie The Black Phone. I just saw that um, with Ethan Hawke. And uh, I was really looking forward to this movie. And uh, I got to say, it really, I thought it kind of sucked. Not to be jump right into it and be too blunt, but um, it looked, you know, the trailer looks cool and it sounded like a cool premise, but um, it just was executed so badly. I'll go through it. So it, it has, um, and there's going to be some spoilers before, you know, if you want to see the movie, The Black Phone and uh, not know what happens. Even though, you know, if you saw the trailer, you can pretty much know what happens. It's one of those trailers, the, for the, the Black Phone had a trailer where basically the whole movie's in the trailer. I guess they don't show you like what happens in the last minute of the movie. So that's like a big surprise. But so it starts out, it's in the 70s. It, kind of, it starts out kind of strong, even though it's very um, dazing and fused, rip, ripped off right down to like they play um, a song, a free ride. Yeah, they play that at the beginning and the, the kids playing baseball and, and they even steal the, um, in Dazing and Fuse, they have the the scene at the Little League game where the kids, when they're, when they're done with the game, they're like all passing by and hitting each other's hands going, good game, good game. And um, I've never seen that in another movie except Dazing and Fuse. And they do it. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, that's a huge rip. And I don't think it's like an homage. I think it's just they ripped it off, blatantly ripped it off. Even though, I mean, it is because, you know, I, I played Little League and we did do that. That's such a good detail in Dacing Confused. That little thing of having that in, in the movie is kind of what makes Dacing Confused such a good movie. But anyway, that's another movie. But anyway, so it starts out like it just totally rips off Days to Confused. So it's not a good start. And then there's like, First of all, and this is a, another big problem. So, like, I could just tell it was bad right away because the, the main kid is this wussy kind of, like, he's, he's kind of this um, very meek, wussy kid who just kind of has no confidence. And he's, like, the pitcher of the, the baseball team. <laughs> and, like, that's not what I remember when I was a kid. It wasn't, like, the biggest pussies who had no confidence um in their abilities who were the pitchers of the baseball team and then they show him pitch and he's bad like they you know they don't even like try and like cheat it they show him like throw and it's he just doesn't throw very well and then um this kid hits the ball and he's like a really good player and after the game he's like hey man you almost got me good pitching and it's just like what that's not how that goes <laughs> like when i was in little league like people were so shitty like if if I you know if someone hit a home run off someone they wouldn't be like hey man good good pitching they'd be like yeah you suck I hit a home run off you hey good pitching the way I I was able to hit a home run off you you're really good you're really good man keep it up keep throwing those pitches where I hit it out of the park <laughs> wow these are the most polite teenagers I've ever seen so then anyway like you know it comes out that there's some guy going around kidnapping kids you know and he, the, he's called the grabber i don't know who's come up with that name i guess the kid's not a very clever name but all right the grabber how'd you come up with that because he grabs people and it's happened to like five kids already and you know everyone's you know the the main wussy kids talking about it like he's really scared and he has a sister and oh and also like their dad, the sister, and, and this wussy kid's dad is um, Jeremy Davies, that actor who's in like Saving Private Ryan, and I get he's like an alcoholic, and he just beat, punches them in the face all the time or something. He's just it's like we get it, dude. He's horrible. So he's he's like really horrible. He's always drunk and yelling at them. And I guess their mom is dead, and she had psychic ability. She would have dreams, you know, where she could like see things that were going to happen, and so. All right, so this is the, one of the main problems. So, like, the, everyone's aware of this guy going around town, like, kidnapping kids. And then they're, um, the kids, and that this is, like, 30 minutes of the movie, like, before he's even, like, great. You know he's going to get fucking grabbed, you know, this whole, you know, because you saw the trailer. And also, like, it's just kind of, like, I don't think I've ever been watching a movie, like, rooting for a kid to get kidnapped. <laughs> Would you just fucking kidnap this kid already? Let's get the show on the road. Jeez. 
lock this kid in the basement. So he's walking home and I swear he's like a block away from school. It's broad daylight. And this van pulls up in front of him and it's his black van. It's just like abracadabra on the side. First of all, just without even there being a, a guy out there that you know is kidnapping kids, this just van would be the most suspicious, horrifying looking thing you'd ever see. Like, it just looks so suspicious. It's like this black van that's, and it's like driving slowly down the street. <laughs> like they keep showing it driving. And, um, and then Ethan Hawke comes out and he's like, pretends like he's dropping his groceries. Like he's really clumsy and he's kind of supposed to be acting like goofy. Like he's, you know, really non-threatening, but he's so creepy. He's first of all, he's wearing like a top end. He has like white makeup all over his face. And I, I'm not even kidding. He's like, Ooh, like that's how he's, and like literally looks horrifying. <laughs> like, like if you, again, if you didn't, if there was no one out there kidnapping kids, you would immediately, like if I saw this guy, I would be like, I would run the other way. He, he looked horrible. He looked right out of a horror movie. He looks exactly like someone who's going to kidnap you. And it's like, so then the kid who's so afraid of being kidnapped sees him and just stops. And is like, hey, can I help you? And it's like, what, what are you talking about? you've been talking the whole movie about you're terrified of being kidnapped from some, there's some weird dude out there kidnapping people. And then the first weird dude you see coming out of a black van, you're like, Hey, what's up? And, and the guy's like, Ethan Hawke's like, you want to see a magic trick? And the kid's like, yeah, like his eyes go wide. And it's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Again, that's like the most creepy thing to say to a kid like it couldn't be any more like cliche and so just in your face that this is this guy is the kidnapper it's like the only thing that would have made it more cliche if you like came out with you know wearing like a thong and <laughs> and like a mask like a ski mask it was like do you want candy in the van and so i don't and then he's like you want to see a magic trick and the kid's like yeah and then he like he's like are those black balloons and then like he opens the van and traps him in the balloons and then you know i don't know put drugs in him he sprays something in his face and then okay so that this is stupid first of all this is happening in broad daylight like uh, literally next to the school and apparently this has happened like five to six times already and and it's like so no one has seen this no one has not one person has witnessed any of this ever happening with the five or six kids. You just feel like by the five, fifth or sixth kid, someone would be like, oh yeah, there's this really creepy black van. Like I saw the kid and then I saw this really creepy van that was black that said abracadabra on the side, like literally following him. <laughs> I just feel like that would be out there already. So then anyway, he, and then he, the kid stabs Ethan Hawke in the arm or something like cuts him really bad with this like rocket toy he had. They don't explain again. They don't explain it. If it's like a weapon he's carrying around because he's scared. And, and then Ethan Hawke throws him in a basement and um, he's like yelling at him that he's going to kill him because he stabbed him with the, the toy. So th he's like, I can't believe you stabbed me with that toy. Oh, I should kill you. And then he just leaves him in the basement and he doesn't take the toy, the toy the kid literally just used to like stab him badly in the arm. Like he just lets the kid have that <laughs> for the whole rest of the movie. This kid has this sharp object. So that's like, OK. And then like, the, first of all, so he's in this basement. It doesn't even look that bad. I mean, it looks bad. It's shitty. But then like. There's like a window I, you know, literally probably like two feet higher than, you know, where the kid can jump or whatever. Like, it's not very, it doesn't look very hard to get to the window. So then, the, and then, so this is another weird thing. So then like Ethan Hawke, you, you have no, there's no backstory, which is fine. You don't need a backstory for, you know, a murder or, or like whatever, a villain. But you, he, the, the main issue I had, he, he doesn't do anything to the kid. Like he just kind of like, He's like, mm, like he's always wearing masks, and he's like, mm, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to look at you. Like they make it like he's kind of creepy. Like, like I guess he's a pedophile, but he never does anything. Like, he literally just leaves the kid in the room. 
so you have no clue you're like well so what is this like is he gonna molest him or like again like i i'm i feel bad i'm i feel like i was pulling for this for ethan hawk to do something to the kid <laughs> just to give it some stakes you know what i mean because it was just like oh yeah, I'm crazy. And I'm just going to leave you in the basement. The kid, and the kid is not a very good actor. The kid doesn't seem very scared. And then Ethan Hawke doesn't ever do anything to, for literally the whole movie. You see Ethan Hawke like a few more times. And he just comes down and makes weird noises and faces and then that's it. So you just kind of, you're, con I was confused. So then, all right, then the phone starts ringing. For some reason, there's a phone there. I don't, they don't really, Ethan Hawke mentions it like he's like oh it doesn't work and it's kind of like this is an abandoned basement so this guy's crazy and he set it up for kids what, what why wouldn't he have just taken the phone out at this point <laughs> like yeah I'm just gonna leave this uh, this phone that doesn't work there for no fucking reason um and so the phone starts ringing and it's like dead kids that Ethan Hawke has already killed this is another stupid thing so then like in the movie you know they set up that two of the kids that have been kidnapped they make comments like oh he got Steve Johnson I, that's not the name but like they I can't believe they got Steve Johnson he's the toughest kid in school you know he he, he, he could beat up anybody and then there's this other kid that is in the you see in the movie and he's like beating the shit out of like all these kids at the beginning of the way. he literally looks like the toughest kid you've had, like the best fighter i've ever seen in my life <laughs> and he like beats the shit out of this kid where he almost like kid murders the kid that kid gets kidnapped and killed somehow even though they they've established that he's literally like the toughest kid you've ever seen in your life um you know, I mean, he fights like fucking, you know, Mike Tyson and somehow he's getting, you know, apparently this kidnapper is targeting the toughest kids in the town. Um, so the kids are calling and they're like, hey, you know, I'm dead, you know, and and, and um, he's like, oh, OK. And then they're like, hey, oh, I'm going to help you get out. I, you know, and they give him like clues to get out, but they, they're not very good clues. They're like yeah there's like a hole in the floor and you can go there and like dig there and he's like oh and then he starts digging but it's like that that kind of net he starts digging and then that's sort of the end of it i guess and then someone's like yeah I, there's a rope that i i hid in there and then he goes and he he tries to climb up to the window using the rope and then he he gets the rope like around this like grate that's kind of like covering the window and he and he's climbing up and then the grate breaks off so and comes down and now there's just a window so then again that's never ever um that's never visited ever again basically now there's just a bare window in the in the room that looks out onto the street so this guy who was planned you know the kidnaps these kids has been doing this for a while has decided to put his dungeon lair right next to a window that looks out onto the street <laughs> so like and he with no shades there's no shades it's just a an open window so he's basically the dumbest kidnapper it's it's so clearly this guy <laughs> so and he never tries to get it get out the window like he, he broke off the metal grate and he just he just looks at the window and then never ever he's <laughs> just never i mean if i was that kid the whole time i would just be trying to break the window open like i'd be like wow there's a fucking window it'd be like if you were in a jail cell and you found there was a window in your jail cell that just went out into the world and you'd be like oh it's too high it's like a foot high like I'm gonna have to climb up another foot to get there. Like it's li it's literally like the kid's probably like four feet tall. It's probably like six feet high. Like you could figure it out if you're just sitting in a basement. So I hate movies like that when like where the characters are just stupid and not and they're just making the dumbest choices. So then, finally, this kid called oh the kid that you know the last kid that got kidnapped who was the one i was talking about who can fight and beat the shit and beat the shit out of everyone he they were like friends some for some reason and he's like hey man you know you, you need to fight back and you, you know you should do just put some dirt from the floor into the phone receiver to make it heavy you know so it'll be a good weapon and he's like yeah that's a good good idea and then it's like 
first of all, you have a fucking th this weapon that you used already very effectively that he's just left you with the whole time. And then the whole movie, he's giving him like bottles of soda for to eat, you know, for his meals. And it's like, so he's given him probably like eight bottles. Like, dude, I mean, maybe use the bottle, put dirt in the bottle. That, I mean, I think that would be a, a little more effective than a phone receiver with dirt in it. <laughs> like, break it and use the glass to cut him. So anyway, at the end, he likes, he comes to school because he kills Ethan Hawke. And so he's now he's like cool because he murdered like the serial kidnapper murderer of the town. <laughs> I guess he just went to school immediately the next day and everyone's like, hey, there's that, I think someone, you know, they're like, that's the guy that killed the grabber. I guess that would be cool if you like were a dork and you went to school and like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, how's it going? Oh, I just murdered that that serial killer. Yeah, I killed him. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. And then he sees some chick and his name's Finny, the whole movie. He's a total pussy. And then she's like, hey, Finny. And he's like, call me Finn. I guess that means he's like a man now. I don't know what the fuck that, it meant nothing. It was so stupid. Anyway, it sucked, the black phone. I was really, really disappointed. Uh, this is another thing I forgot to mention. So there's this other stupid thing where um, there's some like crazy conspiracy guy in the town and he calls the police over to his house because he's like, you know, I think I know where he, you know, where, you know, I've narrowed it down where the uh, grabber could be, where he could live because he keeps doing all the crimes in this like, you know, this area of town. So I've narrowed it down to these five blocks. And then they're like, oh, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And then they leave and they pan down the camera and you see that the kid Finn, Finney is in the basement of the house that this guy, the conspiracy guy who was just talking to the police, he lives there and and he's the brother of Ethan Hawke. But he, he and you, I was like, so is he in on it? Like what, because... So the kid is in the basement under him and he doesn't know his brother Ethan Hawke is the killer. And they, they don't really make it clear, but I assume he lives there. But there is no way. It's like a really, it's like a two bedroom house. Like, there, like how would he not know there was a kid in the basement? <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, I mean, because there's scenes where Ethan Hawke is like wearing the mask with no shirt on, like with no clothes on, waiting to kill the kid just in his kitchen. So I guess he just waits for the brother to go out and do, and do the weird, you know, the, the brother has never seen him wearing these weird masks or, I mean, again, if you saw Ethan Hawke, you would just know he was the fucking killer guy because he looks crazy. Like he's, not, he just, and he acts insane. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like John Wayne Gacy, though. Like, I guess they lived with him and he had people under the house. And you no, know, but I think John Wayne Gacy lived alone. I don't think he had roommates. <laughs> Just like, how fucking clueless. I mean, I didn't like if you, you would like live with a guy and like then you found out he was like a serial killer, like, and not even going out and killing them, like bringing them home. Like, it would be like being Jeffrey Dahmer's roommate, like in a one bedroom and like not know having any idea <laughs> he was doing, even though he was like leaving heads in the refrigerator. So, anyway, I, that, that, and then that guy dies because he's, I don't know, he's stupid. And, um, all right, so that that's basically it. Um, thanks for watching. That's my review of Black Phone. It basically blows. So um, we'll see you next time. Please like this video. Please subscribe. All right, bye-bye.